clustering. Often there is a natural correlation within certain groups or what we call clusters. For example, the households within a village suffer similar shocks. They have the same weather, the same community leader, similar soil conditions, etc. So it is possible that their total expenditures are correlated. In this case, there will be less variation when comparing expenditures of households within a given village than when comparing households from different villages. This is called intra-class correlation within villages. Intra-class correlation takes values between 0 and 1. When it's close to 0, it means that observations are almost independent. In that case, randomizing at lower levels, such as household level, is a good idea. The other extreme case is when intra-class correlation is 1. Then, all the observed variation, let's say, in expenditures, comes from between villages. Within a given village, all households will have the same expenditures. If the intra-class correlation is 1, is as if you had one observation, one point for each village, because all the households in the village are the same and they don't give you any extra information. This is the case when you evaluate programs at village level. When we evaluate institutional outcomes, you have one observation per village. Or for example, if you evaluate the impact of a water well in rural villages. In Stata, to measure intra-class correlation, the command is long way. The variable of interest, total expenditures, and the variable of the intra-class correlation, village in our example. There's a lot of information, but over the middle of the output you can read, there's an intra-class correlation of 0.11. This means that 11% of the variation in the total household expenditures comes from between villages. There is not much correlation of expenditures due to village common shocks. If you write return list, you realize that you can recall the intra-class correlation value under the name R row. In fact, let me create a global macro with this value, saving it for later because I need to adjust most of my calculations to take into account this correlation. Some Stata commands support the cluster option, which adjusts the standard errors taking care of the possible correlation at village level. If we rerun our last regression, adding the option cluster by village, we see that clustering does not change the mean, but only correct the standard errors. Well, changing the standard errors also affects the t-statistic for the test and, of course, influences the p-value. In our example, the conclusion remains the same. We don't reject the null hypothesis, even though the p-value is more conservative now. With respect to the validation of the research design, for all the variables of the baseline before the program is implemented, you should not reject the null hypothesis that the mean in the treatment and the control group are the same. The advantage of using the regression approach instead of the t-test is that we can add this option cluster on villages if we think that there's an important intra-class correlation. It doesn't really make sense for gender, but it will be helpful for other variables. In the outcome, there's only one variable that comes out significant. For the rest, we do not reject the equality of means. As a general rule, your allocation to treatment and control looks convincingly random if you do not reject the test, let's say, in 90% of the cases.